dance. Who would like that? Who doesn't want to dance? Who's too Swedish? <laughs> no, I think I can. I, I think I can add some value because I've had a very unique uh, look and understanding into one coin over the last uh, last couple of months. And uh, I, th I think I can help you have more confidence because you understand mm -hmm. more. Do you understand that? Yes. Hello? Yes. Hey. <laughs> you got to understand. I, I come from somewhere that's... Has anyone been to New Zealand? Who would like to go to New Zealand? Who would like the next OneCoin conference to be in New Zealand? <laughs> It's warm there. So if I'm going to have to come to this cold, negative planet that you call Sweden, uh, you, have to, you have to be part of this. So no, the, the actual reason is that, look, I'm going to share with you some simple ideas. Okay? Some simple ideas. And what you need to do is to understand them. Okay? And so I need to know that you've learnt them. And so I'll say, do you understand? Okay? Yes. And you've got to say yes or no. Do you understand? Yes! <laughs> yes, Edward. Do you understand? Yes, Edward. Yes, Edward. Be nice. Okay? So, now the point is, is that uh, the challenge that people have with OneCoin is that they actually don't understand it. And because they don't understand it, they get it wrong. And they, 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 they act short term, they don't take advantage of the opportunity. When they're talking to their friends and families, they go, ah, oh my God, one coin, children, under the stairs, please. And because of that, they miss out. And unlike um, most of the network opportunities that there are in the world, um, the, the challenge with OneCoin and the power of OneCoin is you've got to get off your assets and go into action. You can't hang around because there is a time structure on this opportunity. Do you understand? Yes, yes Edward. Yes, Edward. Come on. <laughs> That's better. Now, the point is, is, the point is there is a time thing. And, and as you saw and heard, I've been in this business for, um, for a very long time. I used to be an army officer, then I was an investment banker, and then I joined this business in London in the summer of 1989. So I've been a sort of one of the pioneers of this business, but I've been different, okay? From the early 90s, I have been involved in the sort of strategic systems, leadership, development, training and development within the industry. As the guys said, I have been involved and have helped many of the most successful companies, certainly in Scandinavia. I have been here many, 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 many times. I've been to, you know, Shell's Leftio or whatever it is. And and I've, uh, you know, my books are have sold hundreds of thousands of copies in this marketplace. And the reason why I think I've always got on very well in Scandinavia, I think the reason why my books have sold so well here is because you guys like the facts. Would you agree? Yeah. 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 You know, you don't... <laughs> That's the way you should act. Now, the point is, is that... The point is, is that... I, I don't want to shock you, but I, I do have a secret, and that's that people from this part of the world are just, they're a little bit negative, okay? Did you know that? Did you know that some people are going to be a little bit negative? And you're... <laughs> Finnish people. They'll be Finnish people. Now the point is, is that the reality is that people are negative in this marketplace. We have the challenge that we talk about money, and everyone goes, oh, you can't talk about money. All right, lago, lago. 
<laughs> oh my God. How, how much money do you make? Think of the taxes. <laughs> but the reality is, is that, um, you know, for 25 years, I've been involved in this industry and for probably 20 years, I've been a guy who has been the person that people ask about companies, you know, from all around the world. You know, a lot of the big leaders that you've seen, I knew them when they were just babies in the business. I was sort of, you know, I may have been their mentor or their coach or their keynote speaker or they read one of my books or something like that. And the, the point is, is that often I'm the guy who they, you know, they ask questions, you know, hey, should I be in this business? What do I think about that company? And, and the reason why they ask me, apart from the fact that I'm a sort of very direct guy, I won't, you know, you know, there's no bullshit about me. <laughs> okay, the, the point is this, I'll tell people the truth. And also that I have this sort of, I, I've had for a very long time, been the guy who analyzed companies. I've analyzed companies and I've been the guy who, um, who, they've, who they've said, you know, hey, this is a magnificent company, Ed, and I've gone, actually it will fail. And they go, what do you mean? We're so successful, we're booming like this. And I went, no, 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 you'll actually fail. And they go, oh, I don't really like the fact that the reason why you say that. And I go, look, you need to understand that you have this problem and this problem, and that means that there is nothing you can do, you will fail. And normally they don't talk to me for a year or two until it fails. <laughs> and there's nothing worse than saying, I told you so. <laughs> and so for me, um, especially, you know, and talking to people in Scandinavia. But the, the point is, is that you guys are actually not really that different than people all over the world, okay? All over the world, the average person is a little bit negative. The average person lacks a lot of confidence. And what they do is they need that energy that you get from having confidence. And the point is, is that it's all very well just going, yeah, let's get excited. But in this marketplace, they'll think you're on drugs, right? <laughs> You start hopping up and down like some sort of energizer buzzer, button, energizer bunny, what will happen is they think there's something wrong with you, right? Absolutely. In this marketplace, because people are naturally negative, what happens is that the real powerful communication has nothing to do with yelling and screaming and hyping or anything like that. The real power comes when I can look my friend in the face and just because I have the confidence inside me, confidence in my eyes, he knows that what I'm saying, I believe in. That's, that's the power, when you can actually turn around to someone and say, hey, you know, you, you, nearly, you nearly want to say, I'd love you to be involved, but you're too negative, so you can't. <laughs> Dad, mum. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And it's that sort of power I really want you to focus on because our facts in the business are so big, so powerful. You know, I'm the guy who wrote the million selling book on the future of the industry. I'm the guy who has for over 20 years has flown and spoken at conferences explaining the statistics and the reason why this, this industry, when I saw it, was very small, but you know, now is so big around the world, we're bigger than the movie industry, the gaming industry, the music industry combined, we're larger than that. And what I'm excited about what OneCoin's doing is that it's changing the game. We are nearly not like a normal company. And to, and to me, that's great. Who thinks that's great? Yeah? And I think that's important in this marketplace. Because I think we need to think differently, I think we need to act differently, because at the moment we are having results like no one has ever seen before. Okay? No one has ever seen these results. I got, I was travelling from Munich to Gothenburg on Friday night, and a friend of mine from actual Scandinavia, and he, he's been around for a lot, uh, I've known her for a very long time, he's a fantastic leader, and he sends this picture of me next to a one coin. And he goes, 
is this real? Because you know how you can, you know, you can merge pictures, yeah? He goes, is this real? And I went, yeah, that's real. And he goes, WTF? I don't know what it means. <laughs> I do actually know what it means. The point is, is this real? And I went, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he goes, I thought it was a scam. I went, do you really think I'd be involved? And he goes, no, but why are you involved? <laughs> Maybe it's not a scam. <laughs> Maybe there's more behind this. And he goes, are the incomes real? And I go, no. And he goes, I thought so. I said, no, they're double. <laughs> And he said WTF again. <laughs> and the point is to understand is that, you know, we are doing things differently and, and what happens with all companies is they grow in waves, okay? And as um, Kari so, so well explained, you know, you have this pioneer wave. And that's what the company has been through really for about 18 months, okay? We still sort of are pioneering in many marketplaces around the world, but the, it's now we're in this new evolutionary stage. And for those of you that are involved in the company, I think you're gonna be really excited with the new, um, what's called the new One Pro system that I've been working on with many of the, well, with the top leadership from around the world. Um, the real reason I was actually coming here was actually not to speak today, it actually was to meet all the um, top Scandinavian leaders yesterday. And it's just great. It's just great what's happening here. But we just need to do things better, would you agree? Yes. Hello? Yeah. Yep. Because what happens in the pioneer stage is you, you're not quite sure about your opportunity, you're not quite sure how to talk about um, the, the products that you have and the opportunity, you know, about how to make money. But after the pioneer stage, what happens is that hopefully someone like me comes and helps evolve what you're doing to ensure that the business is strong. And that's why you'll notice so many of the top leaders, like as an example of Curry, comes up here and he says, hey, let's just say the facts, yeah? Let's just say the facts, because the facts of this business are so crazy so crazy that that's all we need to say. We don't need to hype it up and down and, you know, do a little sort of dance on stage. We don't need to do that because the strength of the opportunity is so amazing. And, I, and for me, I, I would just like to congratulate the leadership from this part of the world, okay, especially um, Max and David who have uh, obviously organised today. But, I, you know, I also, everyone, But also, there's a whole group of other guys and girls who have pioneered this marketplace. And it is difficult pioneering. I've, I've done it myself. I've, I've obviously worked with a lot of organisations that have done it. And, and you've now got the business to a stage in this marketplace where you can really take it to the moon. And I'm absolutely certain, if you listen to the sort of the wisdom of, of people like Kenny and, you, and people like Udu, okay, those guys, those guys know how to do this, okay? And the point is, is that it's very simple, but you actually must learn how to do it because the key to this business is actually to have what's called confidence in success. What is it? Confidence in success. What is it? Confidence in success. Confidence and success. Because in this marketplace, you can't jump up and down like you've got something in your pants, okay? You cannot hype people in this marketplace, correct? Because they think you're some sort of creep. But what you can do is you can talk to people with a confidence, and when you look them in the eye, they turn around and go, oh my God, they have something that I don't, that I don't have, and I want it. Yeah? Yeah. That's what they want, and, and for that, you've got to have this confidence. And for me, um, that is my primary focus when I, when I look at all the things that I've been doing and helping OneCoin and talking to the leaders. Everything for me is about ensuring that we can build more confidence 
in what we do, okay? It's build more confidence because if people have more confidence, then more people will buy the education packages and they'll be more effective mining. If people have more confidence, then they will naturally recommend to their friends and family that they should also come in and mine the coin. If people have more confidence, then they will actually take the next big step and join the, the network and then take this opportunity around the world. Because if you talk to the people who are involved in this business, who have been successful for some period of time, yet it's, it's like some sort of international jet setter. Oh, you know, and you know, my team in, uh, my team in Brazil isn't too bad, but you know, those poles are doing really well. And when I look at the Thailand people, you know, they, they were small and now they're a little bit big. And <laughs> imagine if you were sitting having a coffee next to these people and they, they go, oh, Yes, yes, I, I really like the UK. <laughs> but the reality is that that is the opportunity. As, as it stands today, really the world has barely started. It's barely started. The only reason that there's so many people here who have been involved for a year is because this is where it really, as far as the network is concerned, this is like the home market because you know obviously Sebastian and Yuha come from this part of the world and so for us it's a matter of saying how do we look at the business going forward and I, I, I got involved in this business because Curry okay my friend Curry there and he will admit that when he first told me that he said oh you know can you have a look at one coin for me and I had a look I went Curry Gary, like we've been friends for 20 years and I'm going, really? I said, there's something in the cryptocurrency, but you know, what are these guys doing? And, and so anyway, over a period of nearly, nearly three months, he's going, Ed, 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 Ed. And so finally he uh, convinced Dr. Ruja to say, hey, it may be a good idea to meet me. And I, I sat down and for anyone who's ever met Dr. Rusha, what happens is like, you know, okay, she's a doctor and she's worked, you know, she's, she has this sort of, not medical doctor, you know, she has that high, very high academic and McKinsey's pretty amazing, but you, you know what I mean. Like you hear the story, oh yeah. <laughs> but the fact is, is when you actually meet her, and I, I've met an enormous amount of successful people in this business, okay? I've worked with many of the billion dollar companies, I created a billion dollar company. So, you know, I've, I've sort of seen a lot before and, and, and it was fascinating. When I think about it, it was fascinating. I sat down, asked some really curly questions <laughs> and she had the answer and, and very, very quickly, it was like, okay, this is really someone who understands about the most important stuff. Do you understand? She understands about the most important stuff and she can actually do the, the hard stuff. And, that's, and I knew very, very quickly that I really, really, this is a company that has a massive future. But the other thing I did say to her is that when I sort of, when I started, I, I sat down and I said, do you realize that what you say in your videos People are actually not saying it in the market. Do you realize that? And she goes, yeah, I know. <laughs> and I go, in fact, that, you know, a thousand a week is what? That's 50, that's 500,000 Swedish per year. And I have run a company in Gothenburg. I know how much people, the average person is paid. Would you agree? Yes. Yeah? If you turn around and said, hey, we got, we got people who are making, you know, 10 million Swedish a week, what would they say? <laughs> they say that's wrong. <laughs> In Sweden, wouldn't they? They'd say, oh, that's bad. <laughs> Poor, think of the taxes. <laughs> <laughs> but the real, the real power, I think, of what, of what OneCoin's doing is, is that it's very easy, very fast for someone to make 10,000 Swedish a week, 20,000 Swedish a week. Would you agree? Yes. And that to me is really what you need to have confidence in. That that is, that is the real opportunity. Because then you can turn around and say, hey, you can because get you don't develop, what happens? What happens? Yeah, what, what happens is you, 
you think short term. So you have too many kids. Okay? You destroy the environment. You're open for exploitation. So you have a look at the places where there are problems with child slavery. Have a look at the problems with wars. Have a look at all these problems. They're not in the areas where there's banking. But in the places where there's no banking, there is. Look at that graph. Latin America, 65% of people don't even have a bank account. It's crazy, don't you think? Hello? Hello? (laughs) Don't you think that's crazy? And the reason why this is so important is the fact that when you look at how you provide banking to people, as uh, I can't remember who actually said, you know, there's even in Kenya now, they have this ability to have that thing. That is a picture of a man in Kenya doing his banking on his mobile phone. And the point is, is that the key to the new banking of the unbanked in the developing world, the key to that is actually having a cryptocurrency. What would happen to the developing world if they were able to bank and borrow and loan and and be part of the economic world? What would happen? Hello, what would happen? Come on, think. Don't just sit there. (laughs) They would develop. Do you understand? They would develop. They would develop. They would stop having 10 kids. They would stop tearing up, the, burning down the trees. They would look after their environment. And hey, it's important for Sweden. They would stay in their home country and not come over here. <laughs> Do you understand? Thank you. No, no, and it's, and it's important to understand. So. The potential of cryptocurrency is not just, hey, you can make some money here. The potential of cryptocurrency, it is the key to change the world forever. But the point to understand is that to have a cryptocurrency that's used by literally a billion or more people all around the world, you can't have 21 million coins like Bitcoin. Do you understand? You've got to have a few billion coins. There's a reason why we have 100 times more coins than Bitcoin. And the reason is, is because if you listen to Dr. Ruja speaking about the opportunity, you will hear her turn around and talk about the unbanked. I didn't make this up. She told me about it. And I go, how come it's not in the presentation? (laughs) Ah. So the point is, is that's the one reason. And and because of that, that opportunity is so large. The second one is what's called remittances. It doesn't really matter so much in places like Scandinavia, but for the rest of the world... Every year, as the World Bank says, $600 billion is sent. $600 billion is sent between people. Some places, it's extremely important. And it is expensive. As as you heard, you know, Udo is is an expert, actually, in cryptocurrency. That's why he's written a book. And as he said, he talks about it is really expensive to send this money. And cryptocurrency is proven, proven as a much better, low-cost, cheap, fast alternative. Okay? It's not a matter of, hey, could we take some of this market? We, we're going to take all of this market. Okay? Because why would you pay 7% when you can pay 1%? Get it? So how much currency do you need to be able to use 600 billion crypto uh, 600 billion dollars do you need a couple of hundred million do you need a billion think about it how much currency do you actually need <laughs> you don't know do you <laughs> is he going to tell me i don't think so <laughs> do i have to work it out i don't know 
look, to be able to send that much currency, you need tens and tens and tens of maybe even hundreds of billions of dollars of currency so people can have the currency and send the currency. Do you get it? Yeah. So when you think that we're so much dramatic, we're so much cheaper for that, obviously the market for cryptocurrency is in just remittances is something like $600 billion. And this does not account for $22 trillion of business to business remittances. I don't put the 22 trillion up because it just gets silly. <laughs> the last reason is what's called protecting your income and wealth. And look, you live in Sweden, you don't really even think about it. You don't really think about the fact that your money is based in Krona, do you? You don't even really think about it. Maybe if you went on holiday and you had to convert Krona uh, into Euro, yeah? Then you think about how much is it worth, what's the exchange rate. But imagine, do you know what that note is? That is a $50 trillion Zimbabwean dollar. $50 trillion. That, that stuff is literally not worth the paper it's written on. And I can see only one use for it and you use it after you've been to the toilet. <laughs> because it's not worth anything. And so anyone who has the future based on any sort of currency that is very weak, they know what that's like. You go to places in the world whose income, whose money, whose wealth is based on these rubbish currencies because the, the, the country creates them, they know what you're talking about. The only difference is, is people don't understand how, what has happened to the major currencies of the world. Okay? And so we look, that's the really big story that we hear about, is, is this, which, you know, Max and Narvid gave me this. I think this is the world's greatest graph. And what all it says, it came from the Federal Reserve, if you haven't seen it before, came off the website, right, of the of the Federal Reserve, and it shows that in the 200 years before the global financial crisis in 2008, they, they had so much money. And then in the global financial crisis, they basically did, it's QE stands for quantitative easing, it's another name for printing money. And they printed five times more money in the last eight to nine years than they had in the previous 200 years. So what have they done? What have they done? Hello? What have they done? Hello? What have they done? They have turned the US dollar into toilet paper. And why do you do that? It's because your debts are so high. Easiest way of getting rid of your debts is just print a lot of money. And, yet, and these days, you don't even have to print that much money. You do, they have other ways in which they do that. And so that's why you hear people go on about the US dollar. But it's not just the US. It's Canada and it's... Um, it's... Uh, more people, please. It's in South Africa and it's the Euro and it's the Chinese and it's the British pound and the Australian dollar. And they've all done it. That's why we're not looking at the US dollar going, because <laughs> everyone's done it. The only difference is, is that they haven't thought about how, they're going, how that's going to impact the world. And the reality of all of this, it just means that across the world, there is a lot of people who want to put their wealth into something that isn't going to be devalued. Okay? They're just going to put, it just means that if I've got a choice of having my income and my wealth and something other than this currency that my government is turning into toilet paper, that would be cool. Would you agree with me? Hello? Yes, Edward. Yes, Edward. Do you agree with me? Yes, Edward. Bravo. Okay, so the opportunity for this is absolutely massive. The point is, is when you include all three of these customer groups together, the coin value of the cryptocurrencies that will look after this is at least one trillion dollars. At least. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Yes. 
Hello, does that make sense to you? Yes. So what happens is that when people go, ooh, look at the growth of the company, it's so crazy. Who cares? Who cares when they go, oh, Bitcoin's $5 billion and you're worth, you know, more. You know, don't you, aren't you worried that you're going to finish the marketplace? Who cares? That's how big it is. Because that's how much currency you need to fulfill the unbanked, the um, protecting the wealth and remittances. You need that amount of currency to be able to do that. And the, the, the other thing, which is the real killer, which if you actually listen to Dr. Rouge's videos, you will understand that it's not about 1,000 cryptocurrencies being part of the billion dollar opportunity. What it actually is, what it actually is, is cryptocurrency is like social media. Cryptocurrency is like social media. It's digital, it's global, and it's networked. What is it? It's digital, it's global, and it's network. It means that it's connected. So because it connects in digital and global, it means that instead of having 1,000 cryptocurrencies, eventually what will happen is that the big ones will just kill the little ones. And that's what happened to Facebook. Facebook didn't kill MySpace. Facebook just become the, became the one and MySpace died. Do you understand that? And so when you actually look at this opportunity, okay, the goal of this company is to create the reserve currency. Google it, reserve currency. And reserve currency, you'll understand that this is the global currency that the world uses. But also understand that, that whilst everyone thinks it's the US dollar, it is published many times that Russia, China, Brazil, India, um, the Gulf states all want to move away from the US dollar. And the idea that they will work together to create a new currency is crazy. It won't happen. The only logical thing is they're going to take on a cryptocurrency, which they won't be able to create themselves. What will happen, it's, it, what will happen is someone else will. And so to create this, the genius of Dr. Ruja, really, the, the, to me, her, the thing that I, that I find extraordinary that she was being able to do is she saw this when no one else did. Got it? Yes. That's what she saw. She understood that Bitcoin can never do it and therefore the biggest race in the digital world is who can create the first global cryptocurrency. Because whoever does that will create the equivalent of the Facebook of the cryptocurrency world. And all the others must die. Because you only use one Facebook, right? Yes. You don't use five different types of Facebook. You only have one. And that's why it's so important that you understand exactly that's happened. And when I, when I understood that, I went, okay, I get it. That's why this company has only just started. That's even when you see this, they do, you know, it's one billion there, two billion there, two million there, things. Who cares? It's just chicken feed compared to what the opportunity is. Does that make sense to you? Yes. yes. Hello, does that make sense to you? Yes. And that's the logic, okay? At the end of the day, you have to project confidence. You've got to project confidence. But in this marketplace, it starts here. It starts here, in your brain. Okay, why is this going to be big? Okay, we mine coin because the people who will want to buy coin are the world's unbanked, are the people who want to do remittances and the people who want to do, um, who, who want to protect their wealth. Yeah? yeah? That's why. That marketplace has got to be worth at least one trillion, one trillion dollars. One trillion dollars. And, it's, and only one or two cryptocurrencies are going to survive. And if you listen to Dr. Ruzzi, you will hear who say that. 
you understand? That is why she's saying that. And therefore what it does is it means the strategy. What this is, is when you hear her say, we're, we're, going, we're going to be private mining until we go public, we need 80% mined. She's saying that to be, because to be a global cryptocurrency, you need a lot of coins. Do you understand? Yes. It's not about having 500 million coins. It's about having 1.5 billion coins. And when you've got 1.5 billion coins and you can't just print them, they get mined at 1.44 million coins every day. You can't change it. That's why it's so strong. That's why it's so credible. So it's a straight line. But the more people who mine coins, the higher the price. Got it? Yep. So, so long as the thousands of people join one coin all around the world, the price will continue to go up. up. When the company goes, when the company then opens, opens the, the coins to sell around the world, who will buy them? No, who will buy them? I just spent 30 minutes telling you. <laughs> the unbanked, the remittances, the protecting their wealth, they will buy the coins if you don't want them. Does that make sense to you? Yes. And therefore, when people turn around to me and say, oh, I need to sell my coins, I just think, idiot. <laughs> I just think you're an idiot. And I feel like slapping the upline because the upline should explain, the sponsor should be explaining to that person that the whole value of this is created. We're mining now because in the future, the world will buy and use one coin. And if you, if, if in three years time you see, you know, one coin's famous all around the world, you know, the next Google Uber, blah, blah, blah. yeah, <laughs> everyone knows your friends will go to you and say, oh, Jens, you're so intelligent. How come you bought those one, you know, how did you mine those one coins in 2016? Man, you must have made a fortune. And you'll go, oh, I sold them. <laughs> And your best friend will look at you and go, idiot. <laughs> and forever more, every time, every time you'll be sitting in the bar and they'll go, how's your one coins? <laughs> Everyone who gets this puts their coins in the safe. Okay? All the top leadership in this company across the world have put all of their coins in the safe because they don't want to sell them. The people who are buying all these coins on the exchanges are all the top leaders. This company doesn't buy and sell coins. And they just think of all these stupid idiots selling their coins. But they're fortunate because these people are so stupid, they make enough money to buy more coins. And they buy the coins and put them in the safe. <laughs> but to you, for you to believe this, all you need to understand is unbanked, remittances, protecting your, protecting your wealth. For me, that's what I need to understand. Because when I understand that, hey, this is this massive opportunity, it's about creating the reserve, and then I find out, and obviously I've had a... I've had conversations with Dr. Ruja that you may not have had or may not have heard. I understand her genius was the fact that she saw this first. She saw it, she saw where cryptocurrency will be and especially designed one coin in a weird way to achieve that, down to creating this network. But as a network, we operate very differently than other organizations. And we do because we don't care about network marketing. Okay, we don't care about that. We only care about mining the coin. And so, that's it. Okay, that's it. And, and really, if, if, you know, when it comes to, you know, being able to sell a coin, you know, there's lots and lots of things that are happening, but in reality, they're not, they're not being created so you can sell the coins. They're being created because in about two or three years, 
One coin has to be used in 254 countries of the world by millions of merchants and hundreds of millions of people all around the world. And if you think it takes three months to create a global merchant platform to do that, you're an idiot. Okay? So what the work is that's happening now is being done because in two or three years it has to all be set up and working so everyone is able to, if they want, sell their coins. Does that make sense to you? Yes! All the digital, big digital areas work like this. When we're looking at Search, Netscape and Yahoo, you know, pioneered and then what happened? Google killed them. When it came to social media, what happened is, you know, companies like MySpace, MySpace pioneered it and then they got killed by, they got killed by Facebook. And God bless Bitcoin, they pioneered and they will be killed by And they will be killed by one coin because Dr. Ruja understood what the final area of cryptocurrency was and specifically designed a strategy to be able to deliver that. That's why she is so focused on the coin. That's why if you ever say something bad or, or rubbish the coin, she will kill you or send someone like me to kill you. <laughs> And trust me, that's the attitude we have because, you know, everyone's working together. It's the weirdest thing in the world that everyone is working together, but because fundamentally the coin is the thing that binds us all together, it's the thing that is the most exciting thing about this business, everything is about that whole idea of the one coin, it means that you can want to work together because when you hear of China booming, does that help you? Yes. yes, when you hear Latin America booming, does that help you? Yes. When you hear about Finland booming, even if you live in Sweden, do you hate them bastards? <laughs> yes. Yes. And even when you hear that happening, do, do, you, do you feel good about it? Yes. yes, because everyone therefore is building the value, building the strength, building the future of everyone who is smart enough to be involved with this. When, when half the world will go, ooh, that's wrong, and you'll get some media people. I'm sure there's a journalist in the crowd right now. Hi, nice to meet you. Okay, if you write a bad article, it just means you're unprofessional. You haven't listened. Clear your ears. <laughs> Yahoo! I'll get some photo. Do I do that, Kevin? <laughs> <laughs> the point is, the point is, is that we don't have to raise and jump up and down. The facts speak for themselves. The reality is that the new message that will come out of one coin will change because people get confused. They, they see 1.6 million members and they think that those are all networkers. They are not. They are customers. Correct? They are customers. Their sole job is they buy a package and then they, they, they put their tokens into mining. They are customers. This company is all about customers who get involved with the cryptocurrency. And we just need to change the language, change the way we focus, be more professional, looking after people. The pioneering days are, are over. Our job now is, as, as Curry was saying, it's all about being the trendsetter stage. It's all about building the confidence. And I tell you what, you can see when you understand that, that this year is going to be spectacular. Correct? Yes. It will be spectacular. But the challenge is that you are going to have to get some confidence in success. That will release that motivation that's inside you. It will allow you to overcome your natural, negative, boring, Scandinavian, Lagom, Junto's Law attitude. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you will get off your asses and go into massive action. Because as, as my dear friend Kenny said, this is just weird. You can make more money in six months than you can normally make in six years. Yeah. It is the craziest opportunity. It is, it is so different. I've never seen anything like it in my life. I am overjoyed to be involved. I'm overjoyed that, you know, people are going, Edward, you know, your reputation. I go, I'm overjoyed. 
The reason why, the only reason I'm here is because I'm smart. Okay? That's the only difference between me and other people. I'm just here and smart and I do my research. So, so that's really cool. So, in about two hours, I'm going to take absolutely great joy to jump on an aeroplane and fly back to somewhere where you can actually wear shorts outside. <laughs> and, and as I go away, I will go away with a smile, knowing that, you know, there's such a buzz there's such a buzz with you guys. I will go away with a smile on my face because I know you have an incredible group of leaders who are now have decided they're gonna work much better together, okay? They're gonna deliver things that they, you know, they're already working like crazy, but they're gonna to work to, to help you guys, not just in their own group, but across all the groups, across all the countries. That's not just happening here, it's happening in Germany, it's happening in the UK, it's happening across the world. As a one world, one coin, one pay, one everything. The reason why we say one is because fundamentally as humans, we just want to be one, correct? Yes. Yeah. And I think that for the first time in history, there is a concept and an organization that is able to do that. Oh. And it will come from you guys. And because I'm excited because you have the leaders, you have the opportunity, you have the amazing Dr. Ruja, you know, as who's just a genius to be able to create this thing. And because of that, I know that this marketplace is going to rock and roll. And I look real, I get the numbers, okay? And I really look forward to seeing them jump as you finally get off your backside and go into action, all right? So for me, it was a pleasure. I'm excited. I got my red socks back on, which I haven't had for a couple of years. <laughs> and we're going to tear up the marketplace. So thank you very much, guys, for inviting me. Rock on. Rock and roll. See you to come here with their own flights, their own expenses, everything, and uh, please give them a round of applause. So now everybody, it's up to us to inform people the right way. It's all about information. I, I, I can't even imagine anybody telling and package that kind of message better than that. So thank you everybody. Let's, let's have fun together and create some really, really, really good results. Thanks. Happy birthday!